What's up guys? So I put in a couple of GTV power kits and I found out that one of the boards I was working on had headlight and tail light or had a headlight and tail light that did not work. So I ended up swapping the LCMs and I found out that the LCM was the issue. I didn't just jump straight to that. I took out my multimeter and I poked around a lot and wasn't able to find anything too crazy different between the working board and the non-working board. So that's when I went to more extreme measures and swapped out the LCM. So what I'm gonna show you right now is what I did to remove the LCM from the GTV power kit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go through this fairly quickly here. I'm going to share the best practices that I follow. And I'm just gonna jump into that now. The first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do before we do anything else is we wanna get our power out of the way. And what I mean by that is we want to go ahead and take our XT60 here and we just want to disconnect it. Boom. Disconnected. Just because that's disconnected though does not mean that we are completely free. I'm going to go ahead and take out my multimeter and put it on volts. Hopefully you can see that. It doesn't look like you can. Let me get it out of the glare. Now you can. Nice thing is we actually have a battery negative and a battery positive access right here on top of the LCM through these screws that go down into the main board. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my positive on the battery positive, put my negative on the battery negative, and you can actually see we have over 50 volts still present, and that's because of these capacitors. Now, what I like to do to speed up the process is hit the power button. You see how quickly that dropped down from 50 to 13? And sometimes if we hold the power button, it'll speed up the process. You could see it tried to turn the board on again, but it does end up slowing at a certain point and we end up just having to wait. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait a bit because I want this to be fairly low and I'll just speed this part up for you guys. All right, so it's down around 2.5 right now. I'm gonna go ahead and start disconnecting things, but I am gonna double check the voltage after I'm done disconnecting things. 2.5 is fairly low, so we shouldn't really have any issues, but just didn't wanna have 75 volts going through here when we're working on the sensitive components. And that's something that's a good practice with any PEB that you're working on. The same type of process can be done. It is a little bit faster on like I've done EUCs where you disconnect the main power from the battery and hold the power button and it drains a lot quicker. I know I sped it up, but I actually sat here for a handful of minutes just waiting, pondering life. And I actually learned a lot about myself in that period of time. You should try it. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and start disconnecting things. And I'm gonna start with just whatever's easiest to grab. All of these have like a little tab that you can squeeze and pull. Trying to be as gentle as possible. I don't want to yank on it if the tab isn't pressed in. But you can see, I'm just going to try to point at it here. And I don't want to use metal, so I have something plastic I'm going to, sh I'm going to show you with. But these little tabs right here. Hopefully you can see that. But I'm able to squeeze these with my fingers. And I'm just pulling up steady. I just kind of want these out of the way. If you have trouble remembering where these go, there are little labels and indicators and things like that that you can see that tell you. But if you're really worried, take a picture before you disconnect everything. That's always the best way to do things, is take a picture. This one here, by the way, I'm already getting it a little bit, but this one is the most stubborn. It's just a slightly different connector. There we go. I would assume that the more times you take it apart, the easier it gets. So I have all of the connectors out. The only other thing I want to get out of the way here is the antenna for the Bluetooth. So I'm using a plastic spudger. I like to get it right underneath this side and just pry because I'm actually getting a little bit of leverage on this connector. I'm not on the wires of the connector, but I'm running the plastic of the connector and I'm just going to rotate this until it pops off. Keep that out of the way too. So now 
everything that we need out of the way as far as connectors go is out of the way. This one goes into the main board, so we do not need to disconnect that. And we don't need to remove any other connections at this point. The only thing we do need to remove now is we have four screws that go down into the main board. One, two, three, four. And before I mess with anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and double check. Never hurts to double check things. Our voltage here and see how much we've actually dropped. Negative on negative positive on positive, you can see that we're right around one volt. Now, using these, which are conveniently here, is the same thing as going down here to these main leads. Any positive and negative that you have on this main board should be reading the same voltage, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on here. And I'm just showing you that we get the same reading. 9.3, I'm gonna quickly go here. And you can see we're at 9.1, so yeah, it's the same reading. I feel comfortable disassembling this with less than a volt because that's literally less than a double AA, A, triple A, D battery, C battery, whatever. That's not very much charge at all. What I am going to do is I'm going to start with the battery negative screw. And this is actually a 2.5 millimeter. Try to get that in there. 2.5 millimeter hex. And I'm just going to go ahead and start removing that. Something that I found helpful, because even though there's not much voltage in here, you still don't want to be dropping metal screws around everywhere. I'm going to use my tweezers, and I have kind of an angled set here. I'm going to get that underneath the head of the screw, and there's a little, like, plastic. It's not really a washer. I don't know what this is called exactly, but it's kind of like a washer. It serves the same purpose. Maybe it is a washer. But it's right underneath, and I'm going to go ahead and position my tweezers right under as I'm lefty loosening, and I'm going to keep that around the threads of the screw. That way, when it actually frees itself, and I hope I have a good hold on this, when it actually frees itself, I can take it out with the tweezers and drop it in a safe place. So I got the negative out. I'm only doing that because I don't want any power going through this LCM board. So removing the negative, breaks the circuit, makes it to where this top is no longer or should no longer be powered with the less than one volt that we saw. But I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of these, and I will speed up this process here to get the remaining three. All right, all four of the screws are out, and what we're going to do next is very carefully... We're going to grab the outside edges of this and we're just going to pull straight up. We might need to wiggle a tiny bit. Don't wiggle dramatically, but just a very little bit because right underneath here, there is a socket that this LCM fits into on the main board. And you'll see when I move this out of the way, I'm just going to pry a little bit. It's on this side. Boom, came right out. So got that out. You can see the little socket right there, and that fits right on there. When you put this back in, it's the same exact steps in reverse ultimately. The only warning I will give you is that when you're plugging this back in, you will get a spark because these are discharged. You've got your 75 volt battery or whatever you're charged up to. The higher the voltage, usually the greater the spark, but you will get a spark between these. If you're not doing this constantly unplugging and replugging in and getting that spark over and over and over again, you're not going to do much damage at all. But if you do this all the time, for whatever reason, you shouldn't be doing it all the time, then you could potentially start burning up the pins inside your XT60 or the sockets on the female side. So that's all there is to it. If you have a faulty LCM or you need to swap it for any reason, that's exactly what you need to do to remove it. And as I stated, putting this back in here and lining it up with the holes and carefully pressing it down. You do have to get this out of the way a little bit, the main leads from the, the main board. But you line it up, make sure you feel that socket, and you can carefully press it in, and then just put everything back together in the same exact order. Anyway, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I'm not really doing an entire breakdown of this, but this was something that I came across on a brand new kit, and I figured if it happens to somebody else, or if they just want to know how to do this for future reference, then that's exactly how it's done. Anyway, thanks for your time. Appreciate you guys as always, and keep fixing.